So in this tutorial, what we are going to do is we are going to take superior drum at three and we are going to route different parts of the drum to different audio channels. So basically to simplify it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take kick and route it to a different audio channel, take snare, route it to a different audio channel, take hi-hat, route it to a different audio channel. And similarly, the process will go for crashes and other drum parts. So the reason of doing this is when you route different parts uh, of the drum kit to different channels, it gets really helpful in post-production and in mixing mixing stages. So let's get started with it. So first we take a, a MIDI channel. So let me just let me just start from the very scratch. So I'm making a MIDI channel. I'm going to delete this one. So delete it. So what I'm going to do is I'm inserting from my plugins here. I'm inserting Superior Drummer 3 into this MIDI channel and it will rename itself to Superior Drummer, I guess. Done. And uh, the renaming has been done. So I'm just changing here the drum kit to my preferred drum kit. And this is the drum kit I have. I have my MIDI keyboard mapped. So you can see I'm getting sounds. So the thing is, if we do not route uh, this, this drum kit to different audio channels or different channels, then what happens is all of this rec gets recorded in a one channel. And in the mixing stages, you will not be able to apply different plugins to let's say snare, uh, to let's say kick drum, to floor toms. So if you, let's, uh, let's say you, need, you want some reverb on the snare, that won't be possible if we do not route it individually. What will happen is the whole uh, reverb, the plugin that you want in the mixing stages will be applied to the whole kit as one if we take just one channel. So to make it uh, easier in the mixing processes, uh, in the mixing stages, what we do is we route these and then we take individual one by one and mix them individually. So this is really easy, fairly easy. All you need to do is you go to the mixer in the superior drummer you are, again, I'm in the channel one of the MIDI. I'm going to the mixer. Now here you can see there are outputs. You can see there are output. Kick is going to output one and two. Kick out is going to output one and two. Kick sub output one and two. And similarly, all the channels, all the channels here are going to output one and two. So what we need to do is we need to differentiate these outputs for kick, snare, your uh, hi-hats, your toms, your flow toms, your crashes and your ambient noise sounds that we have we have here. So I'm going to start with the kick drum. With the superior, okay, there's one more thing. With the superior drummer, output one and two by default are uh, um, assigned to this channel and they cannot be changed. So we can start with assigning output three and four. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to play the kick first. So here I'm playing the kick. And I'm going to look at the meters, what all meters are getting the sound, sound levels. So I'm getting some sound in uh, snare, uh, this is snare drum bottom basically. This is basically a mic leakage that is happening. So I'm going to ignore this. Other than this, we have the first four channels that are getting the kick sound. And then we have two uh, ambience channels, which we are not going to route in the same. We will route them later on. So here we have, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, route these, uh, the output of these kick, four kicks. So, so let me just select them. One, two, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to put the output of all these to three and four. So this is done. Now let's close it. Let's make a new channel. So I'm going to create a new track, audio track. I uh, do it by on Windows Control plus T. You can also create it by going to create and then insert audio track that says control plus T. On the Mac there would be similar something, look at, look for it. So here I am uh, in the new channel, I'm gonna rename it first. So this is kick superior drummer. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, this is actually routed to my mic as of now, uh, the input is mic, I'm gonna change it the mic change the mic from audio to uh, audio from first go to audio from go to superior drummer 3 here i have superior drummer 3 and in this go for the channel number 3 and 4 so now wh what will happen is you will see when i play the kick 
you are, I'm getting the signal. I'm the signals are here. So if I put into monitor in, so if I trigger this, I'm getting the signals. See, if I play the hi hats now, no signal is getting routed here because uh, I have differentiated the channels, output channels. So kick again. I'm getting getting the signals. Hi hats. No, no other uh, part of the drum is getting routed to this channel. So only kick will be recorded on this channel. Now let's go back to the superior drummer and route other parts of the drum kit like snare, hat and other parts. So this is snare. This is the channel. I'm again in the mixer. This is the channel. Uh, these are the two channels for snare. Snare top and bottom. So let's play the snare first. These are other two channels as well. So I'm going to route them together. So total of four channels for snare. Yes. And the other two that are getting the signal, these are again ambience. So I'm going to ignore them. These are the major channels. So let's route them to output five and six. We have used three and four. We are routing these to five and six. All right. So let's close it again. Now again, the process is same. Create a new channel. Uh, let's shift it down here. And I'm going to rename it again to snare. Superior drummer. All right. Again, the same process. Audio from I'm getting audio from superior drummer, and in here the channels I selected were five and six. So when I play a snare, I'm getting this, and if I put the monitor trigger on, see there's no signal in uh, the kick drum, but it's here. When I play the kick, this is again the leakage that the kick is put putting into this. So if I play floor toms some leakage again in the snare but uh, i don't think this will happen in the, when i play a crash or right so you see the leakage is not happening here okay so now we have uh, routed different channels of kick and snare let's do the same for uh, your hi-hat as well so again i am in this let's let's play hi-hat this is the hi-hat identify the channels Okay, this is the only channel that is for hi-hat, I guess. Let's uh, explore other hi-hat options as well. Yes, this is the only channel for hi-hat. So just select it. Output, let's put it to 7 and 8. And close this mixer. Now create another track. And the track is created. So I'm just going to rename it. This is hi-hat superior drummer. All right. So again, audio from superior drummer 3. And then it was seven and eight. Now let me play the hi hat. See the signals are coming. And if I monitor it, now it will not get. See, so uh, the similar the process will remain the same for your other parts of the. I'm not going to do every part of it, but you can do it for rack tom similarly flow tom. This will be a practice exercise for you. Do it for rack, tom, flow, timer, uh, or whatever, whatever number of instruments you have in your superior drummer kit. Mine is NY Volume Three. You might be having a different kit, but the mixer would be there. Just uh, the process is basically identify the channels and uh, route them to a different output. Do the same to the uh, your audio track. All right. So I have done the basic three. Now let's 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 use this and record record some basic parts so that you get a better picture. So let me move to a mixer view. All right. So let me just trigger everything for record, and let's just basically record every part individually, and then we will we might play uh, some basic uh, rhythm. So I am recording the bass drum here. You can see there's a MIDI input as well. Just the uh, kick drum is getting recorded here in the kick channel now let's do it for this is the snare i'm not doing it in tempo uh, i'm just doing it basically we know there's no tempo so just doing it now let's try some hats So you can see in the channel one, uh, the MIDI is getting written and in the channel four, the heights are getting written in audio form. So these are the MIDI input signals. These are waveforms. 
okay so let's play some basic uh, rhythm Okay, now I'm just messing around and making it worse. All right, that would be really helpful to demonstrate the further process. Now that we have uh, routed the parts of the drum kit differently, so why, how we are going to use it in mixing and post production? Let's have a look at that. So the first thing we can do here is we can remove this uh, superior drum and MIDI track if we do not wish to record any further parts if this is all i want in print and i'm happy with it i can remove the superior drummer what it will do is uh, it will give me a, a lot of uh, cpu power free so uh, the i will get a lot of power for my post production processes rather than just dedicating it to this so I, what i'm going to do is i can either just i will just uh, de-arm it deactivated it so let's just play it still so what's going to happen now let's see so here i am i'm going to play from here Okay, so play from here. Am I getting any, getting any sounds? Any sound? Auto. Now I have the sounds. See that uh, the superior drum is uh, deactivated and only 4% of my CPU usage is uh, taken here. If I activate it back, it goes to 12, 13%. So a lot, you can see three times more CPU is being used. Deactivated it, 4%, back to 4%. So this is really helpful to do it. Uh, you you will be able to process a lot of more channels if you get rid of superior drummer in post production. First thing, second thing, the advantage of doing this is again, if I want to do uh, post FX uh, kind of thing, if I want to add different plugins to different channels, I can add reverb, delay whatever I wish to these channels, or even compressors, EQs, whatever I feel like. So if I want to send the kick to let's say reverb, now kick is having reverb other parts are still the same and now let's send the snare to reverb now let's do the same for hi-hats this can be done again and again so this is this is really helpful let's play it one or once over so let's try delay if i want now i have added delay on the kick which is really stupid so let's shift to hi-hats and add the delay now you can hear the delay on the hi-hats so i am able to apply uh, different effects to just a single particular kit otherwise this would have happened to the whole kit here if i would have done it here so uh, i will let me demonstrate that as well let, let's mute these let's re-trigger the superior drummer here again and let's play it from here again again so it's playing this is a completely different sound now and let's let's send it to some now the whole kit has been processed in the reverb not just a single part you can hear the reverb on kick snare as well as hi-hat now the reverb has been reviewed for every part so this is one thing one very critical thing that we need to do in the mixing because in parts you might need snare with some reverb in parts you might need it dry hi-hats with some reverber is uh, etc there, there are a lot of possibilities you, you you can explore in mixing so this is really important in terms of mixing hope this uh, tutorial helps if you have any questions or queries uh, do post them in the comments below and stay in touch thank you very much